away from Jezzy's. Cass it in there. Well, it's pretty standard stuff so far. Again, Riven Band out versus Jezzy's. It's one of his go-to champions, and people like to get him out of his comfort zone. Mm. We saw him play Ari last last uh, game. It's not exactly the best pick right now, and it was actually a very smart move by Fnatic, forcing him onto something he probably isn't playing too much right now. Dr. Mundo taken away. This does mean that so far, Yasuo, who though has sneaked through a couple of times, hasn't been picked so far, despite the fact uh, they were they were baiting, I believe, Trevor and Joe into it, but it didn't happen. Elise taken away. Shivana, Renekton and available. Uh, Elise also in has just been banned out. That means Annie could be the first pick. This means SK Gaming now can possibly pick up Lee Sin and maybe get a little bit of an advantage early game. This is actually what Gambit also had versus uh, Copenhagen was last time where Elise was banned, then they took the Lee Sin. Shivan also coming in now. Freddy loves to play Shivan and he's very good on it. And they take it away from Youngbox, so we have to see something new now. Well, in the game earlier on against Fnatic, they locked in uh, Renekton and Shivana straight away. This time around, Svenska is not being drawn into that, it seems. Like you say, Freddy could be taken out for the top lane. I definitely think it's Shivana top, unless they want to also take the Renekton away from uh, from Youngbox. But I don't think they worry too much about Renekton right now, especially with the Shivana. I would prefer, at least, or I actually think they would prefer to get a, either a jungler or maybe one of the AD carries. Well, it is maybe going to be Thresh for N-Rated. N-Rated really wants to prove something since getting back into a team in the LCS. Of course, he played in the spring and then obviously was set aside in Fnatic. Yellowstar taking his place, who is doing fantastic so far for Fnatic in this spring summer season. But the, don't forget, he joined Evil Genius as an analysis. He was at the World Championships with Lemon Dogs as an analysis. And now, of course, back as a player. We'll see how it works out for him. But right now, it is going to be Thresh and Shivana being locked in. So standard start for SK. Very standard for SK, very standard for Copenhagen Wolves. Interesting enough, now Copenhagen Wolves, I keep talking about this Lee Sin, I know I mention it again and again, but they talk, They told me after the game versus Gambit how they felt they lacked the early game pressure of maybe a Lee Sin. So we will see. They pick up Renekton though, I think it's more also to see what SK picks and maybe they mm. want to try and counter it. Well, Renekton top lane, Ziggs in the middle. Ziggs a champion you are delighted to see uh, coming into the meta, I believe. Well, six means now that we can have a very long game. If Copenhagen Wolves falls behind, they can just rely on six wave clearing and wave clearing and wave clearing and delaying the game. It's almost like the old Nivea. So, overall, I think it's a good pickup to take it away from Jesus. And again, now he pretty much only has Gragas left, or maybe an Oriana too. Candy Panda locking in Ezreal. It's a champion we've seen on Creaton for all three of uh, Millennium's games two of Millennium games so far. Uh, there is the Lee since Van Skeren wants. That's the champion he was looking for. And it didn't come as early as I expected, but we have it in now. I like to see Sven Skeren on Lee Sin. I want to see him make some big plays early. And I especially want to see him going bot lane. He now has a lantern he can even take mm. from from uh, in Raided and then try and set up a few kills, maybe get Candy Panda rolling, and let's see what he can do on the Israel. Final choices for the Copenhagen Wolves. They've already picked their mid lane, so no surprise there. Will we see a Jinx? Will we see a Lucian? What are they going to go with for that AD carry? And more importantly, what will it go in the jungle? What is amazing looking towards the fact that he hasn't got a lease? Now, he played Olaf yesterday. Oh, Vi. It's a great pickup now, right? Good all around the game. Good versus Lee Sin early game. Can actually duel him as well in the early skirmishes. And once he hit the level 6, he can lock down the target. Ezreal is really hard to get to. He has his E, he has his flash. With Y, you can instantly lock him down. Renekton can come in, or any can come in, and then stun him, and then can try and kill him. So, the Lucian being locked in there. What, what do we make of Lucian? We just heard Reckless in the interview, of course, talking about uh, how Lucian got got nerfed about two, two patches ago, back in 3.14 or 3.13. I'm not sure which one it was. Yet people continue to use him. Obviously, he's got high mobility. Is that really the only key? Lucian is just an overall safe pick. Like, throughout the entire game, he's safe and he's strong. He has a good laning phase. Even after the nerf, he's still very strong in the lane. His level 6 is somewhat decent. It is not the best for all in, but he's still very strong. And then he scales really well also into the late game. He has, as you talked about, his mobility. He's very hard to get to. So, overall, Lucian is just like, he's just a very safe pick and he's just good all around. Well, the final pick, of course, was nearly. You saw it again and locked in there. So this time, Jez is playing very safe with those spears. Long range battle in that mid. Long range battle, but Jez is going to have a hard time versus Six. Mm. Six can pressure him down to his turret pretty much from the start, and he's going to have a lot more damage to pull out on Jez. I feel a little bit for Jez unless he gets help from Svenskan, though. Yeah, we'll see how it works out. So what are we seeing from these two teams? They have been locked in. Of course, Copenhagen Wolves won a piece at the moment. They're one win, one loss. 
SK Gaming coming into the 0-2, and I hate to draw on it, Deficio, but you know yourself, you've been in this situation at the start of a season where games start stacking against you. How do they pull themselves out of this rut? The thing is, you just have to look at the small things when the games start. If you get the combo you want, this is like a small victory, you get more confident, you say, yeah, now we have what we want, let's show them. Then when you get into the game, if you manage to get first plot or if you get a good start in the lanes, it gives you also that small confident boost. So it's all about now for SK to just look at the small things and then use them. And in the end, when they actually pull out a win, they will start really feeling, okay, we can do this now. We saw actually ourselves ourselves doing it in the first split where we beat, I think it was Giants, and then the next game all of a sudden we beat Fnatic. Yes, we've got to bounce back. We'll see if it works out for SK Game. And of course, let's check out what you guys at home thought. So. 68% of you have voted for the Copenhagen Wolves. No surprise, honestly, coming into this one. They have got a win under their belt against the Lions. Yeah, really no surprise. Copenhagen Wolves has been looking very strong. SK kind of shaky. But for me, this is a game for SK where they can actually try and bounce back. I'm not too fond of the Nidalee pick versus six. But of all, I'm looking forward to see what they can bring. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen. The Copenhagen Wolves starting out as the blue team. And we've seen SK Gaming counter-picking. Or has it worked as the red team? At the moment, we will haven't seen too much aggression with level one. But we were thinking, potentially coming into this game, SK might try something. Yeah, SK is in the point right now where they don't really have too much to lose. They're chasing the first victory. A level one tactic from Enraided, we've talked about it yesterday as well, how good he is at making these level one tactics. And now you don't really have any wards before 130, so you can actually go in, three or four people, and try maybe force an early kill. Well, it is a standard start in terms of item builds. You can see all oh, the spear catching on Kaltard opening up there. That's a bit of a misplay by him. Could have done with side sidestepping. Hasn't backed away from this one, so he's going to stick around, just let the natural regen there. But what I wanted to talk about were these Doran Shield starts that we've been seeing non-stop throughout the weekend. Doran Shield is simply just great combat stats from the start of the game. The only real option for supports right now, if they want to go for the early fights or want to be more safe, is the Relic Shield but you get slightly less HP region compared to the Dawn Shield. Shows how punch drunk I am, because it is just a Wednesday, not a weekend day. I'm just used to it being weekends right now, but uh, it is going to have to take a little bit of getting used to not being on the standard Saturday and Sunday, of course. Super week means we are Tuesday, Wednesday, and of course, tomorrow, Thursday, five more games. But right now, it is all about the Wolves and SK, and the wards are going down. Now, another thing about the SK combo to have right here is, if they actually fall behind, they don't really have too much wave clear. And versus a 6 and a Lucian, who are really good at dealing both tower damage and also generally sieging, it can become a real big problem. And they will rely on Jesse's landing some good spears. Well, we do see Candy Panda landing a shot on towards Unlimited there. But it will be a blue buff start out for Amazing, a red buff start out for Sven and He's going to pick that one up. Diamond all down the bottom. Stun is being held by Unlimited. We see how these early trades go. It's Candy Panda they're going to go down on. Quick Flake comes straight out. And that's a pretty close trade. But it's SK again that came out for worse. It, Candy Panda managed to land a great Q in the end and therefore pulled him on the same level of, of HP as Forgiven. Right now, though, a lot of pressure coming out early. And Copenhagen Wolves, they are known to be very aggressive early in the bottom lane. Well, as it is right now, we do see them continuing to push forward. It's all about hitting level two first. Who will make it? And, of course, the aggression that we see from them, we do see again. And Liberty trying to build up that stun, but he takes a lot of damage straight back from it. One more minion for Cobain Wolf should do it. I expect him to go instantly as to kill the first melee minion right here. Oh, never mind. They actually don't get level two. And now they did. Now they do. It's Copenhagen Wolves that got the stun to start with. Sorry, the level two, but they didn't have the stun available. We did just see Forgiven going aggressive just as we cut away, just catching our camera gun on the hop. And that's what I absolutely love about Forgiven's playstyle. He's so aggressive. He wants to get kills in the lane. He's not happy just farming. He wants to punish the enemy. So let's look at this mid lane. We can see Ziggs versus Nidalee. Of course, Jez is up against Kaltard. It's a, it's a lane phase that could take a while to get going because both these are going to be still in maximum range, which actually kind of leads into Jez's play with the Nidalee Spears. Sure, there's an advantage in that way for Jesus, but if we see already right now, Kautar is pushing the wave up to the turret. Youngbug is doing the same. He has the advantage with the on early game. Svensson coming up, though, can potentially get a gank going. Well, we'll see where the young book's already heading away. His spider sense is maybe tingling, but not enough. Sven Skeron is ready and waiting to pull the trigger. And young book just trying to get baited into us one. They're going to go for it. This would work very well in for Shavana's favor. He's going to slice, dice, flash. It's not going to be enough. Sven Skeron comes in, and it's actually first blood for Freddy with the Ignite. The Ignite picks it. 
Beautiful play by Svenskan. We just talked about it in Champions League. We need SK Gaming to get rolling early game. We need Svenskan to get rolling early game. Perfect start for him and perfect start for Freddy. And how does that play into the whole 1v1 top lane? Because it's always Renekton stronger at the start, but now he's got a kill. That's going to give him that advantage in the top. Meanwhile, down the bottom end, Raider's going to get focused on. Not going to be enough. Turns it back around with a hook of his own. Tries to put the flay out. The flay, not successful. And the Limited just stands his ground and burns his face off. The anti damage is too much for SK to deal with at this point. In Raider, he landed hook on Annie, but he didn't really have any follow-up with it. Go back to the top lane. Freddy getting the early advantage over Renekton is huge for him. It means he will not have the first few levels where he, or first, let's say, up to level 9, where he gets pressured down to his turret and he might possibly be dived. Great start for SK and great start again, as I said, for Freddy. He can now keep his lane even. Jez is having to use the flash there as Amazing came around the backside of him, almost caught him off there, but that's a flash burn. That's a successful gank. And look at the CS already in the mid lane. Huge advantage for Kauta. He keeps pushing him into the turret and he will keep doing this again and again and again. Well, as it stands, we do have the jungler coming down. Sven Skerin was there, but the death sentence did not land on Forgiven. Just quickly dashes away. SK really coming here to play though. Kudos for this. SK, I mean, Svenskan has already put, tried his second gank. First one was a success, second one, not too much. We'll see where they keeps the momentum going as Amazing comes down the bottom. Sven is going to walk straight in. He's going to face check in towards him. This is going to be a jungle fight. I'm not too sure it's going to turn it out because meanwhile the AD carries fighting off the side. Quick safeguard from Sven Skerin comes leaping across and escapes the danger from Amazing. The Copenhagen Wolf bot lane forces Sven to go back. He cannot fight this alone. Right now, Unlimited and Forgiven has all the pressure in the lane and they have the kill potential. Sven Skerin backs away from that one as does Amazing. So both going off and getting their farm going. This bottom lane certainly is one of the most tense we've seen for a while here because the danger between them is pretty high because just look at SK Gaming. They're low on health, low on mana. Meanwhile, Copenhagen Wolves, they seem to be in control and this is what Copenhagen Wolves do well. And Limited and Forgiven have formed a very good partnership at such a short phase. They are an amazing bot lane together because they think alike. They have the same ideas for what to do in lane and they both love to be very aggressive. The Anion Unlimited is pr probably his favorite support, especially because when he is level 6, he's just going to instant go. Well, Kautar's hit level 6. We'll see whether he starts heading towards that top course. That Mega Inferno bomb that he can throw out has a big range on it, so if he starts stepping out in the lane, it's a possibility that he would be going for a kill instead. Sven Skeren will clear out that ping ward in the mid lane. Jezus returns with the Chalice. He wants that blue buff, but not going to get a lot of help with it at the moment because he's not for another minute. Now, both Svenskorn and Freddy has picked up early Doran's blades. They want to fight. And I, when the first dragon fight comes, and if they are there, I actually expect SK to have the advantage. We'll, we'll see how that fight rattles around because Svenskorn's coming to join this time. There is a ward in the bush, so he's going to have his presence known this time. Youngbook's not going to get caught out this time around. We'll clear out the minions and keep on pushing. No farming between towers this time between these two, though. I think, like you say, they want to fight. They want to fight, but at the same time, Youngbook. Rifter next has a bench. Svenskan has to come in for the gank again. Okay, is he going to make it in time? Because Amazing is going to be joining the fray in a moment. Youngbook's just going to stick this one out. Pops that Dominus, keeps the life still going. Ignite on towards Freddy. Has he got enough damage down? Gets the stun on Svenskan. Yes, he does. Mega Inferno Pump comes in. Doesn't quite find his target, but it's a kill for Amazing. Uh, Youngbug is a beast. He gets it. And Raiden might go down here. And Raiden in trouble. Throws out the death sentence, but he's just pulled Forgiven into him. And Forgiven says, thank you very much. I'll take the kill. And this was just a matter of time. They've stayed bottling for so long and they were so low. In the end now, great stun from Unlimited and they punish Inrated instantly. We actually saw Inrated do somewhat the same thing versus Fnatic a few games ago, or sorry, in the last game of SK, where again he got punished and he died early in the lane. Well, they are taking full advantage because they've left a tower beaten on those minions. That's going to be farm that Freddy will not be picking up. They also stole away the red buff as well from Sven Skeren. So taking all the advantages from Sven Skeren, simply trying to be aggressive in the top. And due to the great play from Youngbok top lane, he is back now. He's in the driving seat. At least for the next few minutes, he will dominate the top lane. He will pressure Freddy down. This can potentially mean Amazing can come up and force a kill and then force a tower. So, both mid laners have picked up the blue buff. We'll see how that balances between them. We haven't seen a great little regression. Obviously, Mega Inferno Bomb was thrown out, but it didn't find its home. It is actually Kautar that is starting to surge ahead in terms of farm between these two. Now, Kautar has just been purely focusing on pushing the wave into the tower and make Jesse's lose CS. He has the CS advantage now, and he will keep extending that because he's going to be stronger and stronger in these 1v1s. Looking in this bottom lane, we do see Candy Panda now going for that Trinity Force. Meanwhile, Forgiven actually going, switching it up, going for that Bloodthirster early on. Ward's being placed 
in the tri bush. Amazing going to be pick, taking the second red buff of the game, and I'm wondering whether he's going to pay a visit towards his bottom lane. He could potentially go bot. There is no ward. Obviously, they don't have a ping from covering wolves, so they, they don't know if the bush is warded. But he can go down there. There is no flash and raided for at least about a minute. He could potentially uh, pick up a new kill. Well, we will see where junglers were going and. He is amazing sticking around. Sven Skurin's only at the mid lane and he's actually just been spotted out, I think. No, that was a ping from SK Gaming, so they have no idea that he's there. Vision in the tri bush, though, will give Amazing's position away, which is why SK Gaming are going to step away. And you see Svenska moving down instantly. He's ready if the gank should happen. It seems though Amazing just wants to go in, get a slightly deep ward, get a bit more vision in the SK jungle. Amazing finds the pink ward out there. They may well cause some problems. He Surely realizes he stood on that. He's actually going to take a spear. Now he realizes it. Oh, the cue from Svenska and the kick not quite landing. A thing to notice, though, and a bad thing for SK right now, is the fact that uh, Forgiven could afford a BF sword on his first back, which makes him a lot stronger than can depend at this point. So even if Svenska should come down for a gank, it might actually backfire, and Copenhagen Wolves can maybe even win it 2v3. Well, the culling being used to quickly wipe that wave out and force SK Gaming up against that turret, but it does mean that Svenska has been called into duty, and he is close by. This would be a 3v2. We've also seen Je Jez is making his way down back the backside there. Is it going to be enough? Svenska and taking so low. The hook being thrown out doesn't find his target. End rate is going to have to get away from this one. Forgiven does get himself one kill. Coming around the backside, it will be. Jez has been trying to get around there. Will they be able to get the kill on towards Unlimited? Forgiven has finally gone down, but they can't finish him off there. He's going to the tower. Unlimited is going to carry on. Trisha Browse come through. That doesn't find his home either. Fantastic dodge on the ultimate from Estival there. But as we just saw, fight going on top. Amazing dodge. Dives in there, Assault Battery hasn't been used, but they don't fancy taking Freddy on the turret. We just mentioned the fact how strong Forgiven was. The gang come in, he actually managed to get a kill on n -Ready, even though it was a 2v3. Jesse's came back though, he couldn't get the kill on, uh, on Forgiven, I mean Unlimited, sorry. But all in all, great play for, from coming was bot lane. Kautard fancying something here, instead he takes a face full of spear. I'm not gonna get it. Huh? And uh, you know what, a Mega Inferno Bomb, which was used, uh, I didn't have the cooldown on it, as I was going to say, if it was available, he could have took three members quite low, just got their minds out there, I could see what he was thinking, I could see what he wanted, but didn't quite work out for him though. Good move from SK though, picking up the Dragon, it is what they need right now, they are behind in the lanes, in pretty much every lane, and also actually in the jungle, CS wise, so the Dragon puts them a little bit back in the game, but they are still behind. And how much does it play into effect, because if you think you cast your mind back just before that play happened, They'd actually just use the culling to wipe the wave and shove them up against the tower. So he had what, a wave of minions alongside him. Does that weigh into your mindset at all of, as a support or an AD carrier when you're going to pull the trigger to go? The fact that there is a full wave of minions there? Not too much. In this case, I mean, for in he didn't really have a chance to wait because Svenskan was there, he was ready to go, and he could do the flash play because Forgiven was in range for it. But the scary part for SK is without his ultimate, Forgiven still managed to pick up a kill on Raiden, mm. even in a 2v3. Well, we are back towards this bottom lane. We do see Ziggs backing off in the mid lane as well. Youngbook versus Freddy in this top. It's been back and forth action. Every single bit of lane has so far has seen a little bit of action. Sven Skeren once again, it's going to come in. Dragon Descent used on towards Youngbook. Taken very low already, and Freddy may be feeling he can tank this to it, but the Q does not land again from Sven Skeren. Nice job, dodge right here for Youngbook. Again, it, Sven Skeren actually fell behind now. <laughs> Miss Tipper's coming in, sadly, but Svenskan actually fell behind in XP now compared to Vi. He had a good start, but he hasn't been able to keep it up. Well, we're waiting for Amazing. He's watching this pink ward go down and seemingly helpless, but he's just waiting to set up, keeping Youngbook safe. He's in that butt try, but he's going to have Sven's going in his face any moment now. Ward goes down, and they realize Amazing is there, so I don't think that's going to stop them pushing down for that one. Great bait from Youngbug though. He stayed at the tower, even though he was low. He wanted Svenskan to dive in because Amazing was there. But clever ward from Svenskan, he doesn't face check anything. So looking towards this mid lane, both mid lane has gone with that. Athens and Holy Grail want to get that cooldown, keep that mana regen going. Both absolutely. It's almost become the standard item for mid laners these days. Yeah, Athens really gives you everything you need. You want the mana region, and you want the cooldown reduction, and you want the magic resist versus each other. And at the same time, it gives you a good bonus AP in the start, so Athens is, is definitely the go-to item, and I actually probably expect both of the mid laners to now go for a death cap. Well, right now we do see that the red buff has actually been stolen away by Freddy. Freddy's going to get on towards it, and he's, while this is happening, he's, he's losing out on that top lane tower, but he is stealing away from Amazing. Amazing is about to come around and go, well, goddamn, my blue's gone. 
This is actually a very smart play by SK. No blue buff for Kautar right now. It gives Jesse some briefing room and some cha a chance to actually get back in the lane once he picks up his own blue buff. Well, Stun is available for Unlimited, but there's not really anyone available for him to go to. Maybe they could go on towards the tower. Flash, Tibbers, will it come out there? No flash available. Tibbers was. Stun comes through, and he's just not even going to land the bomb. Candy Panda, though, is very far behind in items right now. We have the Blood First to complete on Unlimited. He's going towards the Last Whisper now, while Candy Panda hasn't finished his Trinity Forge yet. If they should break out a fight, Forgiven will do a lot more damage than Candy Panda at this point. Looking towards those top laners, of course, there is the magical level 10, the switch to Shivana from Renekton. We'll see how that power changes hands. They've both gone. Very similar builds, of course, some fire came being picked up by both, but it's actually double Doran's blade by Freddy, but that mid lane, honestly, there was not a great deal happening there. Kautan has caught the kick from Sven Skeren, but he's not going to get Lee Syndrome and follow up on it. Just great call by Copenhagen Wolves right here. They've been poking out, so I see a fight top lane. Tank mm. versus tank, not the most exciting fight, always. <laughs> Never. But the mid lane call right here for Copenhagen Wolves, Kautan has been able to push the tower pretty much from the entire, like, since level two, and it's just a matter of time before it went down. Well, they keep on rubbing up against each other in the top lane. We are seeing Sven and making his way back up yet again to try and help out in this top. Freddy up against Youngbuck. The two tanks just keep on butting heads, but not a really a great deal coming from this one. What I do want to draw your attention to is this CS gap that starts to appear between Forgiven and Candy Panda. 149 to 116 now in favor of Copenhagen Wolves. It is not that <laughs> Youngbuck is way behind enemy. Oh no, sorry, Freddy is way behind enemy lines, but no pressure again. Tank was tank. We just talked about it. Not much is going to happen 1v1, but the bot lane. Again, we talked about it was the fact that he could go back, he could buy the early BF sword to get aware Candy Panda could only buy a Phage. Huge advantage for Forgiven right there, and he just kept pushing it and kept playing aggressive. Sven Skeren in the jungle of the wolves right now, taking away the wolves from the wolves, and they have already taken away that red buff. That's going to be a flash team as well towards Jesus. Quickly, Nukebook coming in there. Nukebook's not going to be joining this fight, not anytime soon, I'm afraid. It was <laughs> actually the Mega Inferno bomb, which is technically a nuke, which is what I was after. Nice engage though. Sorry about from. that. NIP. It's okay. It's okay. No hard feelings. <laughs> <laughs> Great engage coming in though from Unlimited. He tried to go for the kill. Sadly for him, it is very hard to kill in Italy. It is very hard to kill in Italy, but it's not so hard for Forgiven, or is it? Because the barrier bait is going to come out, but he's not going to pick up the kill. And Candy Panda just at the range, out of range, sorry, of the tower. Great hook from Enraided right here. Starts the engage. He goes in for the dive and then he flashes out so he doesn't die to the tower. Beautiful play by SK, beautiful play by Raider. And this is what Candy Panda needs. He can now come back and finish his 20 force. They're going aggressive in the top lane once again, but it's not going to work out for them. It's the bottom lane we take a peek at, and it was Sven Skeren that landed the kick once again. They keep stacking up, double teaming on Youngbuck, but it's just not working out. He just tanks them every time. I feel like right now Sven Skeren is using too much time in the top lane. He can't really do too much at this point. He should maybe focus on trying to shut down Kautard or try and help the bot lane. Well, it is going to be a run towards the Dragon. That's where the Copenhagen Wolves are going, but SK Gaming seem a little bit short on this one and don't think they have the timer at all. Now, the only vision SK had right here was a pink ward spotting him go towards the Dragon, but it's way too late for him to react. They might actually come in and try a fight if Jesse can land a good spear. Yeah, not going to happen too late. Amazing smites that one out, no problem at all. Without any problems. Mega Inferno Bomb being used for the wave clear because that means that Countard will be backing away as Sven Skeren. Well, he thinks he's caught Amazing, but Amazing's just tracking around. SK Gaming going to try and stack up for this mid lane turret. Sadly, there's no way for them to push because it was just cleared out by Six. This is what Six can do. We have seen him do it time and time again. He throws the bombs to the side lanes simply to clear the wave and stop the push. And then he stopped it dead in its tracks. We see. It is Candy Panda heading back down south, trying to keep it up in terms of farm against Forgiven. Forgiven himself got that Bloodthirster a while ago. Looks like he's going for the last whisper, the Legolas build. The Legolas build, invented by Taps actually it last was, season. Yep. But right now, let's look at the items once again. Candy Panda got the Trinity Force completed. He's now Pickaxe, Pickaxe versus Pickaxe, but Forgiven is going to get the last whisper but first. It won't really matter too much if SK can just delay the fight right now and just wait for Candy Panda to catch up. What do we think of Freddy? He's not going for the Spirit Passage. Instead, he's got himself the Vampire Acceptor in there. So is he feeling that I'm tanky enough already, I need a little bit of damage to start beating up on Youngbug? I think SK just wants to try and split push as much as possible. And they want Freddy now to build his Blade of the Rune King. And then he can really 1v1 Renekton and force him out of the lane. Maybe even 1v2. 
Oh, amazing setting up on towards Freddy. He's gone a little bit too deep. Gets the nudge in there. A song battery is available. He's also got Ziggs coming around. Kaltad going to throw out a couple of those bombs, but instead they choose not to go too deep on this one, which does surprise me. Instead, they want to protect the blue. So here's my idea for the game plan for SK. Freddy will split push pretty much all the game long, while Jesse's and the rest of the SK will try and poke around the mid lane. And we might see an engage come bot. Engage, that's going to be flash tippers on towards end rated. He tries to put the box down. Is it going to be enough damage? He's escaped here. They thought they might get him, but the calling. Can he get a victim? No, of course he can't. Good guy, Tibbos decided to walk away from end rated. It didn't kill him. Nice play by SK here, but also nice play by Komi. Wolves, they can force the bot tower and get fight again. They've gone deep, and Youngbuck with Dominus pops in. Mega Inferno Bomb doesn't really find his target. Dragon descent from Freddy may well be enough. Coward Youngbuck taken so, so low, but they don't get the kick. So Scarra's going to get dropped down. It is going to be Kautar throwing out, but he's got no mana left. They're going to continue chasing. Freddy, can he get a kill? Everyone is so low. Will he get anything from it? No, Kautar just bounces away, throws out the mine and walks off. They got the turn in the bottom as well. It's all going the Wolves' way. Such an even fight, though. Everyone was so low. The Meg and Furna Bomb actually missed everyone right here. Had it hit, they would have been able to take down Svenskorn at least, and it would have been even bigger win for Copenhagen Wolves. Big, big wins all around. Of course, they traded the blue buffs as well. Now, he saw that SK Gaming did manage to finally pick that one up, but immediately it was forgiven taking the blue buff down the bottom there, and he gets back in time to clear out the wave that Jezus was trying to shove on that mid turret. So every time they try and get one of those outer turrets, it's not working. It's 3-0 to zero right now for the Wolves. The lane where SK needs to get out of turret is the top lane. They're going to need Freddy to constantly push that lane top lane down and try and get the turret. At the same time, they need Jesse's to keep landing spears in the mid lane and in the end try and force Copenhagen Wolves to recall and then try and take the turret. But against the six, we saw it yesterday, it is very hard to push. Well, build toward a com list now completed by Freddy. He really wants to try and keep that split push going, but again, you see Youngbook shoving up on that tower, going to get himself a couple of free hits before he backs away from Freddy. Doesn't really want to duel him now that they're both at level 13. Actually, tell a lie, Youngbook's still only at level 12. He's going to step away in a game. Look at this, Sven Skerin closing the gap. Let's check out this replay. This was the crazy fight at the top. Notice, oh, the middle firm won't actually hit, hit Jesus, but Sven goes back in. He's the Sonic Wave. He cannot follow up. He has no flash. I'm saying, so close, man. Nobody dies in this. It's actually amazing. Jesus could chase it potentially, but Kauta knocks himself away beautifully. Everything stops. Everything stops dead, and look at that. They both have to turn around instantly. Youngbuck taking low in this bottom. Sven Skerin coming around, but amazing again is in the tri bush. He's got Youngbuck's back every time he comes around there. Meanwhile, the mid lane, we are seeing once again, Jez is trying his desperately to shove up, but of course, Kautard is right back in there, throws out those mines, no problem at clearing waves. Copenhagen and Wolves want to delay this top tower dying as much as possible. Once the tower actually goes down, Freddy will have a lot more room to make plays and a lot more room to push. So for right now, priority for Copenhagen and Wolves, as the dragon is not up yet, is simply just make sure the top tower, top tower won't die before the dragon spawns. So let's start talking about this bottom lane. Actually, you tell a like, because Forgiven is about to back up. I was about to say, now that Trinity Force is completed, along with that pickaxe, there's surely a power swing in favor of Candy Panda, but I got a feeling we're about to see the last whisper completed for Forgiven. Forgiven actually had to stay in lane right here, and Svenskan is down there. They might be able to set up a kill. They may go for a kill. You see Quick Talisman being popped there, and Wraith is going to be the focus, but he's not going to get the kill. And instead, Unlimited's going to get token down. It's Svenskan that gets in, gets the kill, lands the kick, gets on towards Forgiven, but the rest of his team not on the same page. Has to use the kick to back him away. The calling landing all over Svenskan's back, but again, does nothing. Great play though by SK right here. Unlimited actually was the one who engaged the fight, but Svenskan was there and he managed to go in, get the kill, actually give the kill to Candy Panda on Unlimited. Well, the wave once again being cleared out in that mid by Kaltard, no problem there. Like you mentioned, he is the Anivia, the new Anivia. It just comes in, way, clears the waves, no problem with those mines. Youngbuck getting himself some free time on the top lane because, well, he's actually clearing out because look at Freddy. Freddy's just between those towers, way deep on the pine enemy lines. Freddy wants to force Amazing or either Kautal Amazing or Unlimited to move up. We do go into the replay right here though. Unlimited actually engages the fight, but Svenskan is there, out of vision for them, goes in, Great play right here. Candy Panda can pick up the kill very safely. Actually, Svenskan picks up the kill. Never mind. He does. He manages to steal it away and then just gives a quick kick to forgive. And Copenhagen Wolves with full dragon control. Again, this will be the third one of the game for those. Good play right here by Copenhagen Wolves. They don't take the bait of Freddy pushing between the towers. Freddy wanted to force one or two members to come and try and stop him. Meanwhile, SK could then pick up the dragon. But Copenhagen Wolves completely ignores him and just goes straight for the dragon. Youngbuck returning towards that top lane just to protect it now that he has the time to. Jez is 
hasn't really been able to make any impact whatsoever in that mid lane on Italy yet. Not having too much impact, but it was expected. Six beats him very hard in lane. Now the tower went down. SK has the advantage now split push wise with Freddy, and Copenhagen Wolves will have to send multiple people to kill him. So if Six beats him very hard in lane, why would you pick the Nidalee into it? Simply because they had the Shivan and they wanted to do the split push here, and then they want to siege with Nidalee in a different lane. And once Copenhagen Wolves sends up multiple people to stop Youngbok, they want to be able to either dive or force the remaining Copenhagen Wolves uh, members to back off from the turret and pick it up for free. Well, it is SK Gaming on the invade here. They have four members in the top half of the jungle around the blue, not landing that dead sentence on you, but not even close, in fact. Meanwhile, we do see Candy Panda having to get back up there. They are pinging on towards Kautard in that mid lane, so they're wondering whether they could close in around him. It is all focusing on this top, though. Unlimited has been creating the play so far. No flash available for that Tibbers, though. Copenhagen Wolves is ahead, but it's right now actually SK being the offensive part. They have, due to Freddy being so far up in the in the top lane, they can actually move safely in and try and, and take this blue buff. There might be a fight though. Nope. nope. Sunshine smites us away. Beautiful play. Now they have to try and close out their own blue buff, because remember, it was Countard, uh, sorry, Forgiven that actually stole it away last time around. It has just spawned. We'll see whether they rotate towards it. They will rotate now. Copenhagen Wolves will not try and follow. They're too far away. Countard was recalled. There was no chance they could actually contest the enemy blue now. Great play by SK, they're really working the map right now. Yeah, first tower down for them as well in that top lane. So, Jezis will be getting himself blue ball for Willy. Mega Inferno Bomb's coming in. Not going to quite be enough to steal it away. Almost taking it down. This does mean, though, that Jezis has a long way back to the mid lane. Cobring will decide to not push it, though. They're going to charge straight towards that top. Will they try and push on for the tower? No, they won't. They're just going to back off. Interesting enough, though, Forgiven actually decided to go for Infinity Edge because he had saved up so much gold instead of going for the last Whisper. It will most likely be his next item, though. Well, we do see a little bit of farm from Unlimited in the top lane. He's finally getting himself a little bit of action. And looking at the two supports, you can see 20 CS to 7, so they're actually letting Unlimited have some farm on Annie. They're letting him have some farm. We can see it also in the items that he's actually quite far ahead. He has his talisman. talisman. It is very good for the team, very good for the hard engages. Oh, who coming in? Hawk on Amazing, not the one they wanted. And instead, Amazing is actually going to chase on through. Throws down the assault battery on towards end rating. He's going to get focused down. He gets dropped easily, but Forgiven took a lot of damage out. I think it was a spear that maybe landed on him, and that's going to cause Copenhagen Wolves to step away. But this is the last thing SK Gaming want. They don't want to straight up fight 5v5 or 4v5 or 4v4. They just want to poke, split, push, and siege turrets. Great engage coming in from Amazing, though. This is what the Vi can do, and this is what the Vi will do all game. They're going to be pushing the bottom. They've taken the turret down there. It was Freddy that's done the job and continuing that split push. He talked about the fact that he was going that Blade of the Rune King. He's now got it completed, and they are completing this split push, and it seems to be working for SK so far. It seems to be working, but Illumic actually engaged right here. Oh, they're going to engage on Svensko, and he can safeguard away because, well, Lee Sin is a slippery sucker. And alongside Nidalee, they have a very mobile team with the Ezreal to boot. So at the moment, it is all about Freddy. They have to put all their eggs in that Freddy basket down the bottom. And Freddy is winning 1v1 pretty hard. He's pressuring Youngbug constantly. Amazing might even be moving down here. No, he's not, which means Freddy can just keep pressuring and pressuring and pressuring. Middle lane turret, uh, sorry, top lane turret has gone down. That was Copenhagen Wolves minions pushing that one down. But look at the fist, Freddy really putting the pressure on Youngbuck. No Dominus available for him, by the way, here. So if he just keeps on getting pushed on, he's got no escape, no flash, no ignite, no nothing. Kautad will actually have to ultimate on the bot lane to stop the push from Freddy. Youngbuck will not be able to do anything. Yeah, and that's Winkin causing a 4v1 in this mid lane. And how do we match these 4v1s up? Because obviously Forgiven was doing great at early on. Copenhagen Wolves, they had a great start. They were 4-2 up. But it seems that SK are actually starting to claw everything back. Whenever Amazing has his ultimate, he can actually engage the 4v4 fight, and Copenhagen Wolves will be stormed, bro. Oh, you can see Svensk going getting caught out there. Candy Panda singled out, takes the stun. Flash Timbers catches three members. That's going to be Candy Panda in all sorts of trouble. Assault Battery, he's not going to get away, or is he? The heal comes out from Jezzes and just about keeps him alive. And wow, SK Gaming disengaged amazingly. The heal from Jezzes saved Candy Panda. Great engage coming in here from Copenhagen Wolves, though. They used the Talisman into a Tippers on three people. Followed up by six ultimate. Great engagement by Combining Wolves. We just touched on it. They are stronger 4v4. 
Well, it was a great flash, Tibbers, but they're gonna have to wait a while for that to be back available. Freddy's gonna interrupt Amazing just before he goes back here. Whoop! On towards you, Dragon Descent. Is he gonna have enough to take him down? You bet your life he is. There's no way Amazing can get away from this one. Oh, can he? Kautar comes in, the Ignite running. It is gonna save his bacon. Amazing save from Kautar. And Candy Panda does not have his ultimate, so he cannot try and snipe Amazing. Kautar with the save, beautiful. Beautiful stuff. Counter, uh, sorry, Candy Panda up in that top lane, of course, trying to get that farm, trying to keep up the farm with Forgiven. Forgiven still got that 30 CS lead on him. The mid laners, Kautar, he's got that giant CS wave, of course, that he's been picking up. And that's, well, you know, as Ziggs, you just throw them mines down, throw those Mega Inferno bombs out. You're going to keep that farm going for days. We are seeing Freddy backing off here if he's allowed to by Young Book. No, nope, he's going to turn and fight him instead. Got to fight him, but Freddy has a lot of gold. It's going to be very interesting to see what he actually buys when he goes back. Dragon is up, though, in seven seconds. And Freddy, as you just said, had a lot of gold. He won't be able to back before the Dragon. Yeah, and I don't think he's realized it. Dragon available. This is Copenhagen Wolves got all three of them so far. Can SK interrupt it? SK is coming in late, though. The Dragon will go down for Copenhagen Wolves. There might be a fight, but SK can also just back out. Well, there's no flash Tibbers available, but Tibbers is up. Are they going to find the right target? Youngbook so far being targeted. The actually Mega Inferno Bomb will catch on. Jezus, Jezus goes down. Candy Panda in trouble, takes the lantern. Will he get out of it? You can see the box going thrown down there. Svenskeren comes around the backside. He takes down Kaltar. Svenskeren's doing a number on them as well, around the side. So it's actually a two for one. It's currently to the Copenhagen Wolves, and Rate is trying to run for it. The stun will be up on Youngbook in a moment. He was locked down and Rate, but the rest of the team already giving up on this one, and they're taking their advantages. So Copenhagen Wolves, let's recap. Got a two for one and the dragon. Mistake by SK right here. They do not want to fight straight up 5v5. They didn't even land any poke before they went in, and the dragon was already gone. This actually can signal Nashor for Copenhagen Bulls. Well, it's dangerous play because Freddy's coming back here. They've still got uh, Candy Panda up as well, so he's going to get around the side, and they're not that healthy, honestly. But if they lock on towards Candy Panda, oh, look at that. Quick burst comes down there. Hook on towards Youngbook, not really the one they wanted, but Freddy gets in. Unlimited taken low. Oh, he gets Freddy's dropped. A beast. Now it's going to be forgiven. They go for Candy Panda's in all sorts of trouble. He's going to get locked up. Then Rate is trying to do a job. It's forgiven. They have to lock on towards. Freddy is a beast, but can he 2v1? Well, maybe he can because he's going to lock on towards Youngbook. He's going to try and slice mate. dice. Dragon Descent comes across, he's going to lock on towards Youngbook. He's got the help coming around, and that's going to be Kautar. Stops them in the tracks. It stopped the Baron, but it was another two for two. Freddy versus the world. He almost manages to take down two more people. He can steal a blue buff now. You mentioned himself, he stopped the oh. nation. Second time, he almost gets it with his ultimate, though. He got it. I think he got it. I'm Did pretty sure, yeah. If we can see him. Nope. nope. Where did it go? Freddy, it's nope, on Svenskeren. towards Svenskeren. He came in. What a scumbag. Stole it away. <laughs> so, let's recap. Let's have a look at how things are going. It's actually pretty close, and this is the big fight on Dragon. Here we see the fight. There's barely any poke on Comagos before they go in. By now, can lock down Nidalee, and in the ultimate of six, they can simply burst her down and kill her. Freddy and Svenskeren does an amazing job, though, of killing Kartan in the back line, but at this point, it doesn't really matter. They are too far behind in the team fight, and they forgive and can clear them. Svenskeren just wanted someone to save Kartu. That's all he wanted, but nobody showed for him there, so he wasn't able to escape. Let's have a look at some of the items. It's pretty close still. It's only a 3,000, what, close to 4,000 gold advantage for the Wolves. And of course, that is down to all the dragons that they have been picking up, four of them now. And in terms of gold, you can see across them, the top lane of Freddy is obviously the savior for SK Gaming right now. Mid lane, well, it's a thousand gold difference. Jungle, very much even between those two. 80 carries is not a bigger gap as I would have thought so, forgiven only around about a thousand gold ahead. Bit surprised about Freddy actually picking up the Spirit Visage. This could signal that SK wants to try and team fight a bit more, rely on hitting some poke and then trying and engage. But SK don't really have too much hard engage. They actually need Svenskern to land a sonic wave and then go in and kick someone back into the face of them or in ready to land a hook. Well, don't forget those spears as well from Jezzy's are going to start really doing some serious damage. Jungbook gets hooked in. Have they got enough? No, they haven't. He just walks away from that one. Not really the member they wanted, but it does force the Copenhagen Wolves to think again and step away. It's good poke, though, from SK Gaming. This is what they want. Constantly poke, poke, poke. If Enraded actually had went for the newly founded by Pumandu, a CDR built on Fresh, he would have about five seconds cooldown on his hook, and he could just keep landing hooks and then into a spear from Jesses. He might actually go for it later in the game once he gets enough uh, cooldown production, though. The Age of Legion has been completed by Enraded, so we'll see how that plays into their favor, as it is. 
Ranyan's omen all round for the Copenhagen Wolves with amazing Ang Young, but going full tank trying to get in there. And that honestly seems to be the difference. Where it's why they can't seem to burst down the walls. Whereas the walls, of course, once they land that Ziggs bomb, does incredible amounts of damage to SK. Now, amazing just wants to get out of this lane. Youngbo comes in, but there's nothing he can do against Freddy. No, he's got Dominus available, he's got Flash, Ignite, everything, but Freddy is just chomping him down, and he's realizing he's having to back off. The rest of SK, the problem is, though, that while he's doing that, while he's doing a great job of split pushing, the rest of SK are not really creating any grounds. They can't really create too much because they need the Copenhagen Wolves to back out, and at the same time, they actually need, oh, great Ooh. speed coming in. This is what they need. But they have to be very careful they don't come too close because if Copenhagen Wolves engages 4v4, Copenhagen Wolves will win it. Freddy getting stunned up and taking some tower damage there, but the rest of SK do get on, get a couple of hits. Now they have to back away. Svenskaren will safeguard. Amazing goes very deep on this one. That's going to be a great tip as Mega Inferno Bomb comes on. Jezus is going to get locked up. He's going to get taken down by the Young Buck, and that is a good turnaround from the Wolves, and they're going to continue pursuing. They can run straight up the mid lane. And this is what happens when SK gets too close to the turret. This is why they were scared to hit the turret before, but because of you, they went in and started hitting the turret, and what happens? <laughs> Copenhagen Wolves engage and win the fight. Damn it, it's all my fault. Oh, True Shot Barrage doesn't quite snipe out Unlimited. They take themselves an inner turret. Are they going to go too far, though? They know that Sven, uh, Freddy is not with them because Youngbuck is keeping them busy. They only have Enrated doing defensive duties. Candy Panda comes around the side, tries to snipe out Unlimited, not going to land it. And Hibbit's a turret goes down. And Candy Panda tried to snipe instead of recoiling and trying to come back and try and defend the turret. He didn't pick up the kill and instead Corbin will get the inhib now and things are looking very bad for SK Gaming. Can they catch anyone on the exit? No, it doesn't seem so. And Freddy, while he may well be doing the damage, doing the tanking, when you're not in the fight, it's not going to help. And it's SK Gaming that lose their first inhibitor. Now, situation for SK Gaming is very hard, especially due to the fact that Copenhagen Wolves has so much engage. This means SK actually has to either split up in more lanes, or they just need Freddy to kill Youngbug 1v1 bot lane, so Copenhagen Wolves have to send someone else. It doesn't look like it's going to happen anytime soon, though. Well, Freddy continuing to fight with Youngbug. He's actually just taking the super minions. He wasn't really caring about Youngbug. Youngbug was just taking the damage from the, the burning agony. Uh, burning... Burnout. Burnout. Now, what SK can try and do, they can maybe steal this dragon away. It would help them get a little bit back in the game. Otherwise, what they can do is group five, defend the turret, and then try and land as much poke as possible, and then try and engage instantly as a spear land from Jesses. This is very hard to do, though, and it would actually have required Enraided to go a different build on fresh. Yeah, and while, of course, we're talking about level 17s, level 16s, that dragon's actually worth a lot of money now. Yeah, dragon right now is worth a lot of money. I think it's about 300 gold to each member on the team and some bonus XP to your lowest uh, level members. So getting the dragon for SK right here is actually a huge thing. So that was their first one. They are 4-1 to one down against the Copenhagen Wolves. Maybe the blue buff this time around will be going to Kautad. He's been kind of without it for a while. He's been trying to steal it away with that Mega Inferno bomb. Or will he? Let's see if Svenska and Fancy is trying to come in for the steal instead. Amazing does come in, maybe trying to force it. Amazing had to smite it. And that is great for SK to force Copenhagen Wolves to put the blue buff on the jungle. And Candy Panda is pushing mid lane. Yeah, Candy Panda putting a lot of damage on here. Now he needs to escape. He's going to have that arcane shift and the lantern quickly zips away. But he got a good bunch of damage on that mid lane, despite the fact he's up against super minions. Now, interesting enough, Copenhagen Wolves need to just start pushing down the lane and then if they find an opportunity, they can actually dive. Youngbuck can tank the turret, Amazing can tank the turret, and they have so much engage and damage. Blue buff for Jezzes. That means those spears will be coming a little more often and a little harder because they're going to come around the side. This time it seems that SK have grouped up as a five now. They realize we need to five man. We need Freddy in these engagements. They realized they can't really stay 4v4 anymore. It didn't work for them before because every time they got too close, they would simply end up dying. And now with the inhib down, there's so much pressure on the mid lane. Yeah. But Copenhagen Wolves are playing it very slow right now. They have the advantage. They have the better combo in the 5v5. I'm not sure why they're delaying. Well, they are being brute force back, it seems, once again. And that spear, even against Youngbuck, is going to do some damage because he's already up to a four item build on uh, Nidalee and once those spears start getting up to the six items not quite landing not quite finding its target but look at this Freddy's gone down the bottom and Copenhagen Wolves are thinking right let's go for it they are missing their main member we're going to go straight in for them now Baron Nesha is up again it might be the focus for Copenhagen Wolves if we see them ward up around the whole jungle but they rotate top lane now they can potentially get a lot of damage on this tower before SK can move up there 
Well, the kick landing on Kautar, not going to follow through on that one, Svenska, and the rest of SK Gaming are a little slow to react to this one. And Copenhagen Wolves see if they're going to try and brute force the way in. They've got a Siege minion in there, so they may try and go for it. They need to get some buying time in here. But Youngbird's going to get caught out. Dragon Descent goes in there. Kautar's getting focused on, has to jump away with a barrier. Mega Inferno Bomb comes back in there, but it is going to be the Copenhagen Wolves that are taken low. Can they get Youngbird down? Yes, they can. Nidley Spear lands on towards Unlimited as well, and they're going to continue chasing. Amazing is going to be the next target. Spears will come through. They'll take this one they could turn on baron because that is a three four zero to sk gaming sk win this because freddy comes in with full hp he's tanking three members of copenhagen wolves young bug on the other hand he was down to 50 percent hp when the fight started he died before freddy which meant that sk could now start rolling over copenhagen wolves and win the fight well, it is going to be the Baron potentially here for SK Gaming. It doesn't seem there's too much to stop. And Mega Inferno Bomb is not available. The cooling is not available. So SK Gaming will get a Baron and turn this game back on its head. They had a 6,000 gold deficit at one point. It's back to two. And this right now, I actually think this is an amazing game. So much back and forth and so much tactic in this. I love it. And I definitely think SK Gaming right here could use a win. It used to be for SK Gaming, the Candy Panda had to put the team on his back and carry them home to victory. But as it is, the Dragon's Descent started it all. And notice how much damage Freddy's actually tanking right here. He has three members hitting him, even amazing as he ultimates it, and he won't die. We don't even actually see a spear coming from Jesse, but as soon as Youngbug dies, SK Gaming can start rolling over. Amazing goes down as the next, next target. And when the front line is dead, this is what this meta is about. This is why you need these tanks. Without your front line, you can't really do anything. And forgiven actually tanking a, uh, a, a, a spear. That's the word I'm after. And that's actually saving Kaltar's life because it would have built up the range, the distance to do the damage. And with the Dragon up in 1 minute 45, they're not really too worried about that. It's going to be, of course, the Baron buff on SK Gaming. They want to get in a turret. So that middle lane turret was taken low already. Let's see if they push for it. I have to question the Wits End build on Forgiven right here instead of a Last Whisper. He has no damage on Freddy right now. Once Freddy finishes his Randuin's Omen, we are literally going to see an, in, an unkillable Shivana. Well, that middle lane turret is going to get taken down. They're actually thinking of going for it. Sven's going did lock on towards Youngbuck there. Didn't choose to kick him in towards there. They're going to rotate around that bottom lane turret. Remember, that's already taken a good beating from Freddy. So that will go down very quickly. And that's actually going to even up the gold between these two teams. They could actually just have went straight in for the tower right here. They don't necessarily need the minions. But Cobaning Wolves is so far away that they might actually be able to get at least some damage on it. But I think maybe they should just have gone in and try and face tank the five people. I think they just wanted to try and bait it. Mega Inferno Bomb being used to try and throw it out. Those spears coming across the side. This is dangerous territory for the Copenhagen Wolves. If they get caught out here and taken down, it could be game. SK Gaming has taken full control of this. While Six is able to clear the wave, Nidalee is able to land the spears on your champions, get them so low that they have to go back, and Candy Panda can go in and hit the tower. And right now he's doing a lot of tower damage. Also, Dragon is actually coming up in 30 seconds. If SK, SK picks this one up, they're going to extend their goal lead. They rotate him back around, and SK Gaming, with that gold lead now, is just going to keep on pushing further. With this Baron buff running, they've got around about, just about 70 seconds left on this Baron buff. Just maybe a little bit over, and like you say, that dragon will be up in 13 seconds. They're going to know the timer, but it's all about the turrets they want. They're going to try and push, try and force the middle inhibitor defense, while the rest of the team go and try and take this down this top inner turret. And I feel like we're going to be in for a very long game, because now we have seen how much Six can do. If Comrex, I mean SK can pick down this turret, though, it would be very good for them, because all the outer turrets are now gone. Well, it's 6-6 six, six apiece now, all the turrets. 10-10 ten, ten in kills. You could not get a closer game if you wanted it between these two. Budding new LCS teams. I say budding new ones. Kaltar taking a good spear there because SK Gaming effectively are a new team. Completely different lineup barring Candy Panda coming into the spring 2014 season. But it's a new lineup that has really stepped up this game. Jesus has been playing absolutely amazing face on Disney League. He just lands the spears all the time. Well, they're going to try and push in. Can they get... Oh, Jokinobok taken so low here. That's the main tank driving away from the tower. Will they try and go for this one? Amazing has to take one of those turret hits as well. A spear hit, sorry. More than a turret hit, to be honest, when that lands there. I'm surprised Freddy isn't actually tanking some of the turret hits here. I think they're a bit scared of the hard engage, especially now with flash tipples from Annie. If they should get too close now, the Baron buff is also running out, so we might see SK back out. They can go and get a dragon right now and then go back and shop. Yeah, they're already heading back there. In fact, the True Shop Raj is being used to spot whether it's still up. So that shows that there's a lack of timing, I feel, in SK Gaming, because that's been up for about a minute now. 
And SK Gaming actually took the last dragon as well. So it's a yeah, bit weird that's a worry. That's a worry. But this is a very hectic game right now, and there's a lot of things going on, a lot of talk going on, and I'm sure NRED is very busy dealing out the shot calls right now. Well, that is a 2,000 gold lead now built up by SK Gaming. This is all because of that fight in the top lane as Copenhagen Wolves pushed on the top turret, just led into getting that Baron. And now Copenhagen Wolves are on the defensive. SK Gaming, they're all going to go back and buy it. Let's see what they've been on a shopping spree. Notice that SK Gaming has three Banshee's Veils. Why cannot hard engage on you, or any cannot hard engage on you with the Banshee's Veil up? This is a very smart pickup, especially considering it's on Nidalee and it's on... Uh, as well, actually, there's four because in Reddy just picked the one up as well. So they are all about making sure they don't get caught out by that flash tibbers. And actually, it makes sense because they got caught by it so many times at the start by Unlimited. It does make perfect sense. And Freddy has been leading the charge 105, unkillable so far. And he's just continuing to get stronger as this game develops. Those spears, well, once that Zonya's hourglass gets picked up, is going to be absolutely destroying the light of counter. We already saw it taking two-thirds of his health off. It could well be close to a one-shot kill. We're getting closer. Once he finishes his hourglass, he's going to be even harder to deal with. If they should actually get an engage on him, he's going to hourglass, and instantly as he comes out, his jump is back off from cooldown, and he can actually jump out of the fight and try and, and kite and throw back some spears. MVP for me, though, this game, I have to say it, Freddy has been amazing. Freddy has been amazing. This time Sven Skerens, the one doing the split push, though. He's trying to drive that top lane down while the spears keep coming through there. Youngbuck has got a lot of hit points, 4K, in fact. And you can see it's around about 1,000 hit points just tanking off him. That means if that hits uh, Kaltart so far, it will strip a good half his health off. Forgiven Heaven finished... Oh, he just finished his last whip right now. He will have a lot of damage now, even on Freddy. So the next team fight, it's going to be very interesting to see which front line dies first. Well, Countard, of course, as we mentioned, has got that effectively the Anivia. And, well, we've already seen what Anivias can do in these siege situations. They can hold you off for days. And still, none of those inhibitor turrets going down. None of those inhibitors going down. Spears coming from the side. Copenhagen Wolves are chasing this one with the talisman. They get the flash onto Candy Panner. Not a great deal of damage, though. The Copenhagen Wolves may turn this one back around. SK Gaming trying to get the damage back on towards Youngbuck. Freddy has to flash out of it. Youngbuck goes down to the True Shot Barrage. Now they're going to turn back on towards the Wolves. It is going to be unlimited. Running for his life with Candy Panda chasing. Gets the stun down on him. Tibbers, why are you not using your R to press on towards him. Sven Skoren, though, he's going to get taken down for, for Forgiven, and Freddy has to run away again. Candy Panda does take down Unlimited. It's a two for one, and SK, despite being engaged upon, come out on top. Copenhagen Wolves blows all the engage on Candy Panda, but there's no follow-up damage. He manages to jump out of the fight, and instead they turn to Youngbok, and they take him down. Sven Skoren does overextend a little bit afterwards and gives a kill for Forgiven, but on the other hand, Candy Panda manages to pick up a kill on Unlimited. Again, Great team fight by SK Gaming and great splitting actually. Candy Panda went away from the team just when the engage was about to come. And Comic Wolves thought we want to get him no matter what and it didn't hit anyone else. Yeah, and the problem is because they went for Candy Panda, because they threw everything at him, Jesus was actually already on the side. So he just went, I'm just going to heal you, buddy, and you're going to be fine. I'm going to continue throwing the spears in perfect harmony. He had no worries whatsoever. So it was all in for Candy Panda, and you can see it right here. Everything was thrown at him. Notice Candy Panda's position when he gets engaged on. Instead, now they can turn around. Candy Panda is safe, and he can start dealing out damage right there. Kills Youngbug. This is actually where SK Gaming has won the fight. They don't need to chase now. They decide to stay though to try and get a kill on Forgiven for no reason. Freddy's too low, he wants to recall, but Svenska decides to stay. Big mistake though. Yeah, it actually drew him in, and I don't think Freddy was given too many kind words for that one. Baron being picked up though by the Copenhagen Wolves while that was happening, and now we're going to get into the action because what the hell just happened? How on earth did they just pick up a free Baron 47 minutes into the game with everyone alive? Well, I, it I, was I, happening in the bottom corner of your screen, which is. Frankly, unbelievable. <laughs> and like you say, how did that just happen? Because they had a four on three. There must I be ninjas. They sneaked in there, took the Baron, nobody saw anything. No, the ninjas didn't make it. Really? Again? <laughs> you already did it once. <laughs> oh, I gotta keep this going. Don't worry, you got a whole season potentially of this to go. We'll see how it works out for you though, buddy. <laughs> Unlimited's gonna come in and run there. He's gonna pop that Banshee's Veil <laughs> towards Ben Scarron. And it is gonna be the Copenhagen Wolves pushing up for this free inhibitor in the mid lane. Candy Panda was on the top and now he's just recalled. Sven's gonna have Freddy coming in mid from the side. They don't really wanna fight this. There is a Baron on Copenhagen Wolves. 
bit of a mistake from SK here. Give up a free and hit. There's really no challenge for it. They didn't even try and poke because Candy Panda was left in the top lane and recalled too late. I can see you smiling because I you joked before. <laughs> Tickled myself with that one. <laughs> I gotta be honest. Uh, it is gonna be the Copenhagen Wolves. Will we see a return though? Because this is the situation that managed to just pop themselves in dire, dire troubles. Will SK Gaming be able to equalize it? True Shot Barrage rattles on through. That minion wave is not going to last too long once Freddy hits that W. But look at the lack of wave clear from SK Gaming. Once the True Shot Barrage was gone, they actually don't really have much left to wave clear. Meaning, Copenhagen Wolves can pick up the tower and engage. The Salton Battery was used, but it didn't really do a great deal. They took the tower down nevertheless, and that's going to be the seventh tower of the game for the Wolves. And they keep on poking in there. Those spears not finding their targets just yet. They do have all the Banshees right now though, so it's very hard for Copenhagen Wolves to actually engage. But why do you need to engage if you can just pick up the tower for free? Copenhagen Wolves will just keep pressuring right now and force SK to make the move. Well, Copenhagen Wolves thinking of pushing in for this one. There's a lot of damage going down already. Not to Svensk going and Freddy taking some damage. Candy Panda stripping off almost half his health. The culling comes out, doesn't really do much, but way clear the wave. And they continue pushing on. Those spears on amazing and not doing great deal. And this is one of the reasons that Lucian is such a great AD carry. Svenskjorn cannot jump on him and try and kick him into the team because he has his dash and not his flash right now, but he will probably have for the fight. So SK Gaming actually has to engage with a hook from Enraided. As we approach the 50 minute mark, we may see the final engage. It is going to be Cal. Amazing, they throw through there. Svenskjorn taking so low. Six bombed hands and does a great deal of damage there. Freddy's going to be forced out to back away from this one. The inhibitor turret's going to go down. Candy Panda trying to do what he can to duel them out there, but he's forced away as well. And Copenhagen Wolves take down the second inhibitor of the game. Forgiven and Cal are melting Svenskjorn right here. As soon as he goes in, they just instantly turn around him. You can imagine the call going. Svenskjorn Svenskjorn, 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 all these sinly, sinly, sin, and they just instantly burst him down when he jumps in. Well, the walls have to back away. There's a giant wave pushing down the bottom lane, and I feel that may well be what SK Gaming is going to use to try and keep them at bay. Youngwook actually may catch on towards Jezus. They have managed to go back there, and Limited's actually the one that's gone back. He's got himself a Ryla's Crystal Staff as a support. Ryla's on Annie. I've actually not seen that in a long time, but he just wants to provide more utility. He wants to provide more CC. And if he can manage to slow down Freddy when he's chasing his own AD carry, maybe, maybe it can help. Well, with that Baron buff, it seems the Copenhagen Wolves certainly did the damage they needed to. With two inhibitors down, can SK Gaming come back from this one? Remember, there is still only 1,000 gold between these two teams, or, well, 1,700 gold if you want to get pedantic about it. But that really seems to be the situation that SK Gaming, they were using Freddy to split push, keep that power down, and you can see at 447 and counting minions, he's certainly done that, but it doesn't seem to be working anymore. While the gold is pretty even, the combo in the straight fight is not. Six at this point is dealing out so much damage. Even his passive scales with AP, meaning that late game, he actually has five abilities dealing damage. The walls are stacking five man along the bottom, and. SK Gaming prepared for this one, everybody backing off. They're gonna have to keep those super minions at bay a little bit longer, but SK Gaming are about to have five hungry wolves knocking on the door. Now, again, we've talked about this before, SK needs to land some good spears, and then they need to land a clutch hook from N-Rated and go in and try and burst down the first target they can. Forgiven has no defensive items. He even sold his boots right now, so he could be potentially the target they want to go for. Only three members of SK currently defending this bottom turret. Freddy has to come around and leave those super minions. Super minions on the top lane as well. Nexus turrets are going to be in perilous danger if this continues, and that's why Copenhagen Wolves want to try and siege this for as long as they can. Now, Candy Panda is forced to go back and defend, <coughs> meaning Copenhagen Wolves can go in every time there's a few minions, get a few hits on the turret, and potentially take it down in the end. That is going to be a turret being picked up. Uh, sorry, going down. That was a Nexus turret, by the way, that went down just towards the top there. Candy Panda's doing what he can to keep them at bay, but there is a respawn inhibitor in the middle. That means the top one will be coming back up soon. We do see the Wolves back in off here. SK are going to get a respite, a small one, before the Baron. Youngbug took too much poke. They didn't want to fight. We saw them fight top lane before when he was poked down and it didn't go too well for them. Though, we just saw the new super minions in action. They're doing a lot of damage to the turrets and they're buffing all the minions around them with 70% more damage. Well, SK Gaming coming in trying to get the wards down on that Baron. It's a minute and a half away and I feel this is going to be the final standing point. The final countdown is on and it's a minute. So, right now, SK Gaming has to give the Nasher to Copenhagen Wolves. They cannot go out in an open field and fight them. 
Copenhagen Wolves, on the other hand, don't need to wait for Nasher. They can just go straight up mid lane and go for this inhib and just go straight in and engage whenever they see an opportunity. That is what they're doing, Young, but just backing away from that spear. Max range to it, almost catching him. Everybody glistening with potions. Copenhagen Wolves showing their signal of this ascent here. They don't want to go for the Baron. They want to go straight in for this inimiter, and they may well be able to get it and gain. It's amazing running interference in the top. Freddy taking a beating here. Sven Skerin getting on towards Amazing. The culling coming out, but he's not really doing a great deal once again. Young Book trying to get in their faces. The Spear's not finding the targets. This time he does hit on Unlimited, and Copenhagen Wolves back away. Candy Panda goes really aggressive, but he's <laughs> he managed to okay, shift straight into a Ziggs bomb. Nobody really wanted to engage right here. They were just poking the front line of each other. Nobody decided to go in. Nobody actually saw the right opportunity. They did manage to pop all the Banshees from SK Gaming, though, so they had the chance to go in, but Candy Panda and Jessis were too far back. Top inhibitors just respawn. That means SK Gaming will have a slight safe passage. They have to deal with the last super minions in that top wave, which is where they're going to go. I think it's going to be Sven Skurin maybe going to go up there. Baron spawns the second they go for it. They're going to come in. Will SK challenge? SK has the ward on it. They know this is happening. Will they try and steal a fight? They're going for a fight. Sven Skurin went in and he gets the smite. He gets the smite. True shot barrage comes across. Unlimited taking low. Ignites one gets on towards him. Freddy one, two, two, doing the damage. Mega Inferno bomb comes in, gets flashed away from. Amazing's going to get focused down. It's a double kill for Freddy. They're going to catch on towards the next one. It will be forgiven going down. The top inhibitor will be taken down by minions, but they don't give a toss about that. That because Kautar's in trouble. He's going to get focused down. Now they're going to back away. They can finish the game. It's 60 second death timers. SK though have to defend. But they're recalling. They're actually going to go back to defend the base. Kautar will die right here. SK Gaming could have tried. Will they go for the finish though? We see Nidalee and Eswell actually going in. At least take down an inhib. Super minions on towards the final Nexus turret. They have to have someone to deal with it. Sven Skerin's going to go back. That Nexus turret's going to go down before they get back there. You can see how much damage he's doing. They're going to get the inhibitor turret down. They're on the Nexus now. I think Sven Skerin should have enough to defend Freddy's this coming. one. Freddy's helping Freddy on is on there. And they're going to see Candy Panda, Jezus. They will take an inhibitor down, but I don't think they can follow. They've got this 20 have, seconds. They have 20 seconds. They can actually finish this game. Jess is going to do a lot of damage. I mean, Candy Man's going to do a lot of damage on this turret. Will SK be able to finish the game and get their first win? Amazing deep by Adonashia. I didn't even think they were going to go for it. SK Gaming will win this game. Absolutely phenomenal stuff. SK Gaming finally get themselves a victory. And wow, what absolute epic style. It was a 55-minute game. 17-12, nearly 100,000 gold between both teams as well. Incredible, incredible turnaround. We knew it was all about that Baron fight, but goddamn, what a smite from Sven Skerin. What a smite from Sven Skerin. And also, Copenhagen Wolves, after they got poked down, actually went for the Nasher. They were so kind of low when they went in, and SK Game just got in and they just took full advantage of it and won the team fight. Beautiful play, and it's good to see the relief on their face. Absolutely, and you know, getting that first victory, nobody likes to see a team losing all their games, and now, correct me if I'm wrong, it's only Alliance that have not picked up a victory in the LCS. Only Alliance hasn't picked up a victory. I think it's gonna come though. I'm not gonna say this week, but at least next week. I have full trust in Alliance. But let's talk about these two teams instead, especially SK Gaming. Impressive comeback they do. They were in a position where they couldn't actually push the 4v4 mid lane because they would get engaged on. They relied 100% on Freddy, just keep pushing on Youngbug down in the bot lane. And once they actually got the chance to team fight top, they did it absolutely perfectly. They got Youngbug down and then they rolled over Copenhagen Wolves and managed to actually get back in the game at that point. I think you might just take your pulse because I think you, you may well need a doctor or something. Something's going on here. He's pretty excited about this game because what a finish that was. Let's take us through. Let's slow it down a moment and let's go back to the start because the start lanes, it seemed to be all about the Copenhagen Wars. They had dragon control. They picked up, what, five, six dragons throughout that game. The Baron mess up just threw them completely. Freddy 1-2-2 two, two, being a superstar for SK Gaming. So Freddy was a huge issue for them. But of all, Copenhagen Wolves had this game in the back. This was their game to lose. They had the better fights, and if they hadn't gone up top lane, stayed top lane, even though Youngbug was getting low and low and low for poke, they would not have lost that fight and probably not have lost the game. But kudos to SK. Mm. They saw the opportunity to fight, and they went for it. Freddy came in from the side in that fight, and he manages to just tank everything Copenhagen Wolves had. What a fantastic start. And honestly, SK Gaming, we love to see teams picking up wins here. And it's going to mean a lot to them, of course. But what sort of pressure? I mean, how much of a relief will that be now going into, obviously, day three, the fact that they've got that first win under their belt? 
I mean, this is everything for them right now. Sure, they were only down 0-2. Mm. Of all, it's not too much. We're still in the first week. But getting this first win shows to you also that, you know, you deserve to be here. You're good enough to be here because you can win games. And even games like these, which are so hard for you to win at the moment, uh, like, like if you look at what happened in the game, mm. they still managed to pull it out and win. It's a huge confidence boost and it shows to them now. Next time they are behind, they can still believe and try and come back. Yeah, and if you look at the team games they actually lost, even against the uh, obviously Millennium game one, that went 51 minutes. They were they were hanging on there. They could have had something just like that turn around on them. The Ziggs bombs, we saw how much damage it can do at that stage. Up against Fnatic, well, you know they lost that one, but they don't need to take too much to heart from that because Fnatic are looking incredible right now. Yeah, to be fair, Gambit lost also to Fnatic mm. really hard. They've been looking pretty good otherwise. So I don't think we should take too much from the Fnatic SK game. But the SK Millennium one. They had a few issues in the early game, but I think more that was due to Millennium playing the early game very, very smart and setting up a lot of kills for Curb, or at least a lot of opportunities for Curb to get kills, which kind of made the whole uh, SK fall behind. And at the same time, the Jiri Creaton combo did beat Candy Panda and Enraided. Absolutely. Fantastic game four here between the Copenhagen Wolves and SK Gamer. We're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, it is going to be Shocks and Quick Shot. They're going to be talking with Candy Panda from SK Gaming. I think he might well be a little bit pumped for that one. And after, of course, it will be Rocket up against Millennium. Grab a snack. We'll be back in three and a half.